favored players in the tournament are going to be doing here and right. see who takes their first loss in the Take 2 tournament in Southeast Asia and Oceania. And I've got to say, in Take 2 specifically, it's going to be very hard to come back from the loser's end to win two drafts mm. in a row against a person who has yeah. not lost a single draft on a day. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be rough. Yeah. Mm. Take two is rough. Yeah. Two times take two, even rougher. <laughs> two times take two, that's take four. That's right. I didn't sign up. I didn't sign up for this math. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what is math? I never asked for this. Igni, how long has it been since you did Roach math? <laughs> oh, it's too long. I kind of miss it. Speaking of forest craft, here we go. Forest is good. It's legitimately good. I, I, I used to think it was so bad, but like I said, like Ooh. lately, it's it's been a good pick. Always I actually would have picked craft. the forest craft over the portal uh, craft. Loki. Uh, no. I actually, God, God Bullet Golem looks pretty cool. Yeah, but I, it's I'm like, it's pretty not... sure you always go for the, the Deuce Ex Machina. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. even even in take two, it just gives you an option to be able to generate value out of every card you drafted in your portal craft deck. I think you pick for the God Bullet. It's the God Bullet, for goodness sake. All right, that's fair. That's fair. No, I highly disagree. I think Exo was right in this, in, in this one. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think he also, I think he look at him. <laughs> read it. Read it to me, Igni. Yeah, Igni, read it for us. Can God Bullet Golem. Yeah. Seven play point seven seven. Can't attack the enemy leader. So it's bad. <laughs> at the end of your turn, yeah. randomly destroy an allied artifact follower, deal damage to the enemy leader equal to that follower's cost. So it destroys their own stuff. Yeah, cost so not, mm, isn't mm, very effective no. either with artifacts because they mostly cost one. Yep. So and it gets rid of your board. So yeah. uh, Yep. It's it's the God Bullet Golem. He did not take the Deuce Ex Machina pack though. He took the Otherworld Rift, favored the removal mm. over the Deuce Ex well, and, and, and Deus Ex, and honestly that's Loki. fine. What's up? What can Loki work with? Oh, if you get Noah, Loki actually might see. Ooh, play. that's a that's good curve right, yeah. play too. It's gonna give you double. Interesting. Yeah. Let's see if he picks up a no along the way. It might be the rationale behind why Loki was a potential pick there over mm -hmm. the DEM. Does he get portal? Oh, Noah rather. This is the question. Mm -hmm. It's not too uncommon. It's a silver, so it shouldn't be too hard to pick it up. But. We also talked about cards like Knight's Way a lot. A card draw is very effective. Mm. We have not seen a lot of our players going for the value-oriented uh, take two drafts that we've seen in, in the past. Knight's Way almost by itself is more than enough card draw for take two, I feel like. That's it. I mean, you, you just play it on a turn, and then you just get a ton of value out of it. You can play this long value game. And we honestly, what we've been seeing is our players are just kind of jamming what they have into each other. They're not setting up for a late game. They're not drawing a bunch of cards, giving themselves mm. more options. I think there is a point where you need to believe in kind of your options swing you back, right? Mm -hmm. So you can take the early turn hit to get that card advantage and then swing back yeah, later. Right. Like, save your Evo yeah. points, save the early turns, maybe don't just, you know, trade everything you have for everything, every single turn, things like that. Just think about all of your options, think about your end game, think about what you drafted and what you can draw into. I think especially if you skip over DEM, Deus Ex Machina, the Knight's Way is a, a more sure of a pick. Absolutely. You need that card draw after that. Absolutely. Especially when you're playing Portal Craft and you're adding stuff into your deck, you need to thin that fast. So I think Knight's Way is a really good pick in general and in Portal Craft more so. Mm -hmm. I think Puppet Room along the same lines is very good. It just offers you a lot of advantage turn after turn. Mm. Puppeteer Strings is so good. I'm yeah, not Cruz going for it. really great. Oh, yeah. card, some card draw. I like both these sides actually. BMA has literally had the option to take like 15 treasure maps <laughs> in this take two. Would have a lot of treasure. Yeah. Yeah. That's the life I want to live. If I could get 15 treasure maps in a take two to death, actually, that would be great, actually. Yeah, you just be hunting for treasure. Your opponent's like, what are you doing? It's like, don't worry about me, man. <laughs> worry about you. I, yeah, I've got gold yeah. to find at the end of this journey. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting treasure at the end. Yeah. What are you getting? A win? Gosh. Yeah, you get a win? Who cares? <laughs> Come on. Uh, bear puppeteer. So mm. adorable. I like all of those options. A lot of good options. Oh, I like interesting. I, like I think puppets are just really good in take two. They are? I think you need to take the lefty. Yeah, I think you don't really, you can't really afford to play two God Bullet Golem. Actually, yeah, he didn't take the first happening. one, right? He didn't take the first God yeah. Bullet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. he needs this one. He, he definitely needs Although, this one. Although, you know what? <laughs> Queen of the Dread Sea. <laughs> Queen of the Dead Sea can just be a gigantic threat just with stats, not even having any effects on the That's board. That's true. Of course. I mean, we saw, Usually it, we saw it before, right? Yeah. It just played two big threats in a singular turn, and that was good enough. So Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit anti-synergy with God Bullet. Yeah. 
I don't know if Morton is good enough. It's Morton. not. Morton is fantastic. <laughs> I've had so many problems with Morton over over the season about what this card does. I, you know, realistically, what it comes down to is Morton just isn't good enough. Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish it could steal uh, evolved followers. Then I think it would be. Really I think good. it should just steal anything that has two defense or less. I think that's what it should do. It, it really makes your opponents play around it, and it can steal bigger things, you know what I mean? But in its mm. current state, I don't really think it can see a lot of play. I mean, honestly, in take two, you can get a, a little bit more value out of it because there sometimes your opponent's going to be forced to play a lot cheaper options early just to continue with some tempo, and like you can steal a lot of it with it. So it's not the worst in take two. Mm -hmm. Well, Morton the Manipulator uh, is one of those cards that we've looked at time and time and time again, but it just doesn't seem to make the cut most of the time. Yeah, just a, it like. doesn't click right. Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. It always just feels kind of bad when you play it and you can't do anything with it. Yeah. And you don't get evolve stats on it when you evolve it. So mm. even if you can't get the effect off, you can't trade effectively with it. And that's just, the rough part. Like yeah, in take two, that's a huge cost, right? If you don't get any yeah. effect and it's your only four drop and you have to deal with your opponent's followers, you have to play a four drop three three that then probably just trades into the board. Right. Well, you know what the lesson is? Stealing is not the answer. So with that... <laughs> Let's Wise. see how this what? <laughs> Let's see how this match, Let's see how this match plays out and see who steals the win here. Yep. Don't take the alarm that's, clock. That's not going to be here at the end of the that's day. Not. Sorry. You're going to steal the bell. You, uh, Chat, look do you guys want me to thieve thieve the bell ringer angel clock mm. right now so it's never in studio and it belongs in my house. I hope the rumors that we can buy merch at things at PAX true i hope that's true i need to get me if anything i need to get me some mimi and coco's i want to get myself all things bell ringer angel that's fair bell ringer angel super cool mm -hmm. yeah what do you guys want if you could get merch yeah what would you want think about it you want shirts you want hats you want beanies you want specific in-game items that mm. that are made into real life mm -hmm. do you want plushies yeah plushies do you want alternate leaders hand puppets Stop it! <laughs> I'll lose my mind. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be an option. Stop it! All right. All right. So. Ooh, Spawn of the Abyss. I like it. Yep, I like get, Spawn of the Abyss. It's very dangerous. We get to see another crack at Bloodcraft. This time actually being able to be played. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, Mask of Black Death. Well, let's talk about that card for a second, because wow. we saw that in the last draft. How uh -huh. good do you think that is in take two? It's so interesting to say. I think Mask of Black Death is just so strong in just general, period. right? Yeah. The only thing is, like, you either play Control Blood or you're playing a Bloodcraft deck that is slightly-ish mid-rangey but is mostly trying to swing face, you know? And so I imagine that people just don't want that scenario where their curve gets gummed up by Mask of Black Death, mm -hmm. and so the, it's why it's not included in a lot of the other lists, but it's just so good. It is. I think in take two, it's a little bit worse, uh, mostly because your opponent doesn't necessarily have to go into it. It's not like you're playing this, like, mm -hmm. I have to beat you before X turn, or you have this many mm -hmm. options outside of it. I think it's hard to get good use out of, but it can. What I think it can do best is force your opponent into the decision between either popping your Mask of Black Death or trading with your board, mm. if that's favorable for you. Mm. The thing for me is that it's so cheap, it can combo with things like Spawn of the Abyss in the late game, mm -hmm. and it can't even combo with things in the mid game, right? And that allows you to make a decision of setting up a larger board state without trading in, being able to get that one turn of advantage in terms of pacing and tempo, mm -hmm. right? I, I do think there, so for example, right, leading up to the curve hitting Spawn of the Abyss, you can have a turn where you Mask of Black Death and swing your whole board face, and then now all of a sudden you can play the game differently because you know the Spawn of, of the Abyss is going to end things, right? As opposed to barely not end things and then have to trade board because of it. That's absolutely right. Now, this this is such an interesting turn. So what's funny is that District Girl Bill Demon is great. First of all, mm. we saw both halves of it here. A 4-3 is basically a pre-evolved follower on turn three. And then the next disagreeable demon protects that pre-evolved disagreeable <laughs> demon, which is great. And it kind of puts BMA in a weird spot here, right? So he's got to make some weird choices. If he wants to turn Resonance on, he's going to have to trade in that Singer. Or he can play the Icarus and Evolve. Um, and then play Dimension Cut. Actually, that, that That's sounds amazing. That's probably the turn, yeah. That sounds amazing. 
you play the Icarus Evolve Residence activates your Dimension Cut does four, so you can bypass the four attack, swing your Evolve into the two three, and save up on an Ancient Artifact. Mm. That that all seems good to me. As a matter of fact, I think the treasure map got the Force of Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got some bear pumps here instead. It's interesting. interesting. Wow. Okay. I feel huh. like there was a much better turn to be had there. Huh. And you're just going to leave the Disagreeable Demon in play. Huh. Even the Icarus by itself could have dealt with the board. So what does that mean for this turn here? Is for, so, for example, is this the turn to play Mask of Black Death? I th I think if you, if your opponent allows you to basically just take over the board, you just you do exactly that. You yeah, remove the you board. Just swing face. Yeah, you swing face. You remove as much of the board as you can, and you just continue to keep doing what you're doing. I feel like BMA missed a huge opportunity. He took an extra four damage here, and against Bloodcraft, I don't know if you can afford to do that, especially when we see something like a spawn of the abyss sitting in hand. Of course, BMA doesn't know that, but taking that much free damage for no reason, I I, mm. I, I, I don't know what the mindset is behind it. Right. Well. We'll have the puppet to take care of this, and again has a plethora of ways now to actually deal with this board. Yeah, the puppet's it's just gonna be great turn. against the five-one. Mm -hmm. You Mystery. are still residents not active, and you can't target the dis disagreeable demon anymore. Now this is gonna be funny. Is Mr. Fullman going to be played? Probably not early, because if it is, that means that Spawn of the Abyss could come out and actually do its job. If Spawn of the Abyss comes out first, Mr. Full Moon can kind of cut that down in size. And not make spawn of the abyss right. in game Mr. option. Full moon is not targeted. That's right. Can get to an ambush. Can touch the ambush because it does not target. Mister Full Moon, is that you? There's a very efficient play here, leaving the evolve follower in and just puppeting. Because hmm? puppets cost nothing. Not true. Did you know that these like the model things that artists use, mm -hmm. like the figurines, they're actually super expensive. Really? Yeah. They're <laughs> actually really pricey. Interesting. I remember hearing that, like, talking to visual arts friends, like, a very long time ago. They're, that Those, like, mannequin, those mini mannequin things are actually, like, really pricey. Like, how, like, when you try to, like, put clothes on them or Yeah, and, like, those things that can pose for, like, uh, no, not even that. Monsters. Just, like, just, like almost a stick figure looking, looking models. Okay. That, that you, like, pose them. To, for like examples, like if you were to sculpt something or something like that, I, I don't know exactly what it's for, but expensive stuff though. Yeah. Not in Shadowverse though; they Not cost nothing. Free. Yeah, they're free, absolutely free. free. That's why they're one ones. Mm -hmm. So here we're going to see Mask of Black Death kind of just sit and play. Like again, it might be a gain four for two. Mm. Do you think that's relevant enough in Take Two? It might be because you mm -hmm. don't really have a lot of ways to gain back defense in Take Two. Mm -hmm. So. Gain five, gain four, something in that neighborhood. Maybe even gain more if it blocks out a bigger attack, but mm. not not really likely. Yeah. And so it's just going to kind of be sitting there. The Fang Serpent is great. It just continues to be a good card. You mm -hmm. know, we know Fang Serpent to be great in Constructed. I think it still holds true. Oh, it's great in take two. Great in take two. Now, the real question is, Rev Glow is out of cards. He needs the spawn of the abyss to end the game, realistically, and yeah, BMA has the Fulman answer for right it. Right there. Yeah. This is this is pretty rough. <sighs> okay. And now the the trump card here oh. for Rev Glow. Okay. Oh, it falls a pretty good draw there. Yo, nice. And there's oh, no interesting. reason to play this. I like Fulman. I like that he's saving um his card because that'll allow him the abyss to swing through the ward if it does come down. Yep. We know that Mr. Fullman is probably going to be the option, but Yeah. Now I even in speaking that, that still means that Spawn of the Abyss can attack for eight, which is most of what BMA has. Mm. However, without any other cards left, it's going to be pretty hard to get that damage through. We're kind of in that same situation that we saw in the other match where it's just like, can they really deal that damage yeah. without many options? There's Morton. Yeah, poor Morton. Just a four play point, three, three. But he looks so cool. 
Oh yeah, Snarling Chain's here. Gets rid of the Morton instead of the Ward that can evolve for more. It's interesting. It does save him some damage here, though. Interesting. He's just being chipped away. Maybe BMA is actually scared of throwing Glow into Vengeance. Maybe he I'm, thinks one of those cards is his Vengeance. I'm so interested as to why he didn't just play the Spawn there. Spawn would have likely ended the game. He plays Spawn, plays Snarling Chain on the Ward, wins the game, right? Mm. Huh. Now I think it's just too far gone. I don't even think if Glow played the Spawn of the Abyss, it would be good enough, let alone the fact that there's an answer in Mr. Full Moon in the hand of BMA here. Wow. There's just so much value on board. Does keep him out of Vengeance. Another interesting choice. Doesn't want to force the issue. Yeah, I, I, I think this is the end of the road, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great option. So even in take two, like, you're so far ahead of your BMA. Why push him into Vengeance to give any benefit to him when you can set up lethal anyway? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I get think through the ward. Glow just kind of played himself out of this game. I don't I don't see a way where he can actually win this game anymore. Yep, there's there's no cards he's, to save him from this situation. Anyway. Yeah. There it is, BMA. He's going to move on to the grand finals, and Glow drops down to the losers. And remember, Glow is second on the leaderboard here yep. in Southeast Asia and Oceania. So this will most likely put him into first if. Yes. If he can continue on. Yeah, I, I definitely think he's well positioned to take first place, but BMA might actually take the tournament itself. Mm -hmm. BMA, I mean, he's he's the one that's slotted now. The curse has been broken. Being on the winner's side is definitely where you want to be. Mm. Um, and BMA has put himself there. Glow, you know what? I, I need to see more from Glow. Mm -hmm. Glow right there did not look like he respected the amount of turns he had left without mm. with not playing that spawny the best. Of course, we knew, like we said, that it wasn't going to win him the game, but he didn't even play it and just lost the game Period. You know what I mean? Like, without doing anything. Mm -hmm.